Hey guys, now that we have added a data source and can retrieve data from it, let's explore how to visualize this data in beautiful dashboards. So without any further delay, let's get started. A dashboard is a collection of panels. Each panel displays data in graphs, tables or other visual elements arranged in rows to monitor and analyze specific metrics. Let's create a simple dashboard to start with and gradually explore what all we can do. To create a dashboard, let's go to Grafana UI and navigate to dashboards and click on create dashboard. Let's start adding a visualization panel. First we should select the data source where our data is stored. Let's choose Prometheus data source that we created in the previous chapter of this series. As you can see, we are now in the edit panel section where we need to enter the query to get this data. In this panel, let's try to display the number of pods running in our Kubernetes cluster by their namespace. These are the visualizations supported by Grafana. For showing the number of pods running in our Kubernetes cluster by their namespace, let's choose the pie chart. Here we can give the title for our panel as number of pods running in cluster by namespace and also we can give different details like description etc. But the most important one is the query to get the data from data source. For that let's select the Prometheus as data source and give the PromQL. If you are new to PromQL, I have created a detailed video on PromQL where you can understand PromQL in detail. Please check it out. We can run the query here to see the immediate result and verify. As you can see, 8 pods are running in cube system namespace, 3 pods are running in to-do namespace and 6 pods are running in monitoring namespace. We can also set the legend for this pie chart. Please explore all the possible options here as they are self-explanatory. Please feel free to drop your question in the comment box if you have any issues with any setting. Now let's save the dashboard by giving the name. Pod stats. Save it. As you can see, our first panel of our first dashboard is created. Similarly, we can add any number of panels by clicking add and visualization. Now let's try to show the total number of pods that are running in the second panel. For that, we can select the stat as visualization and this is the prompt kill to get the number of pods that are running in our Kubernetes cluster. Let's run and see. As you can see, there are total 17 pods running in our Kubernetes cluster. We can give the custom unit as pods that displays here. And let's select the none for the graph mode to display only the number of pods. And also let's give the title as total number of pods running. Let's apply. As you can see the second panel is also created. And in the third panel let's try to show the CPU usage of our utility API pods. For that let's select the time series and this is the PromQL. Let's run it. As you can see this is the CPU usage of our utility API pods. And I highly recommend you to chain this query and see what's going on. Let's give the title as CPU usage of pods and apply the changes. Finally, let's add the fourth visualization which shows the CPU usage as a gauge. So let's select the visualization as gauge and this is the PromQL. Run the query. As you can see, we are showing the CPU usage as a meter now. Here if you see the threshold setting, with this we can change the color if the value reaches a certain value. So let's update such that if the CPU usage goes beyond 50%, Let's show it as the red. Apply. Now that we created four different types of panels or visualizations, we can resize them or organize them in rows as needed. So let's create the row here. Click on add and row. Here let's give the row title as CPU usage. Update. And let's create another row as pod stats. Pod stats. And let's move all the panels related to pods to this row. Let's move this panel also. Now let's move the CPU usages side by side and resize them accordingly. So this is how final dashboard looks like. So finally we should save the updated dashboard. Here we should describe the changes. Added more panels. Also in the changes tab you can see what all you changed for the verification. So let's save it. Here we can change the date range to see the metrics of specific time. For example if I want to see the metrics of only for the last 5 minutes this is how it looks like. Also, we can auto refresh our dashboard by selecting the interval. So now it refreshes the dashboard for every 5 seconds automatically. Also, we can mark a dashboard as favorite. So all the dashboards that are marked as favorite can be found in this start section. So this is the dashboard that I marked as favorite just now. So let's get into this dashboard again. And now let's go to the dashboard settings and see what all we can do. 
These are the general settings like title, description, tags, etc., which are very much self explanatory. Now, let's see what are these annotations. Grafana annotations allow us to mark specific events or time ranges on a graph, providing context to time series data. For example, on the CPU usage graph, if I want to mark the occurrences where the CPU usage is going beyond 40%, we can achieve that with annotations. So let's go to annotations and add the query here. So let's give the annotation name as ICP usage and select the data source as Prometheus. And this is the color of the mark and where we want to mark this in all the panels or selected panels. So let's select the panel and select the CPU usage of the parts and enter the PromQL for the query. So this indicates that annotate all the occurrences where the CPU usage going beyond the 40%. Let's apply and save the dashboard. Added annotation. Now let's go to our dashboard and refresh the dashboard. To test this, we should create some load on our utility API with the WRK tool. If you remember, we discussed about this WRK in detail in the auto scaling chapter of the Kubernetes series. Let's see it. Enter. This command runs 5 concurrent connections in 5 threads for 300 seconds. Now let's go to the dashboard and auto refresh our dashboard for every 5 seconds. And as you can see, this turned into red because the CPU usage is going beyond 50%. And let's wait for the annotations to display on this graph. As we selected the auto refresh for every 5 seconds, the CPU usage here in this gauge is automatically changing. Now let me stop the load. Now let's go to the dashboard. As you can see, the CPU usage is going down. As you can see, there is a red vertical line came here, which is an annotation. If you see the exact time range where this annotation is added, we can zoom the graph by changing the time range as the last 15 minutes. As you can see, this is the time range where the CPU usage went beyond 40%. So this is how annotations are very helpful to mark some occurrences. We can also add annotations manually by clicking command plus click. Let's write the description. CPU usage is low and also we can add some tags. Save it. If you over on this annotation, you will see the description as CPU usage is low. Same with this. If you over on it, you can see the description that we configured in the annotation. Like this, we can add multiple annotation queries and each annotation can be toggled on or off. If I toggle it off, the ICP usage annotation will not be displayed and if I turn it on, it will be displayed. Also, if you go to the dashboard settings, we can add the links. These links allow us to easily navigate between related dashboards or external resources, enhancing the usability of complex monitoring setups. A common use case is linking from high-level overview dashboard to a more detailed one, enabling quicker root cause analysis by diving into specific metrics or alerts with just one click. So let's add a dashboard link, the link as detailed pod stats and the type of the dashboard can be dashboard or link. So we can navigate to dashboard as we have only one dashboard. Let's add it as a link to some external resource and let's add some random link for now grafana.com and save the dashboard. Add it link. As you can see detailed pod stats. If you click on it, it will go to configure link as you can see grafana.com. So let's go back to our dashboard. So next thing, let us see what are library panels in dashboards. If we want to reuse the same panel in multiple dashboards, instead of recreating, we can create a library panel once and then use it wherever needed. And if we update this panel, those changes will automatically reflect in all dashboards where it's used. This makes managing dashboards more efficient and ensures consistency in visualizations. So to create a library panel, we can go to a panel and more create a library panel and let's create it. So here, if you go to the library panels, this is what we created. Now this can be reused in any dashboard. For example, if you create a new dashboard, here we can add the library panel instead of adding a new visualization. And this one, as you can see, we didn't configure anything from scratch, but reuse the same panel in different dashboards using the library panel. Now let's go back to dashboard settings. And if you go to the versions, we can see all the versions that we saved. Initially, we did the initial save, then we added more panels and added annotations, then we added link. If we want to restore to a specific version, we can click on the restore and our dashboard will be restored to that point. So let's restore to third version. Yes. And if we go to our dashboard, we will not see the link anymore because we reverted our dashboard to the previous version. Also, we can share our dashboard by clicking on the share. 
So this is the link of our dashboard that we can share it to our team members. So once they access this link, they have to log in and they will be directly navigated to the dashboard. We can also shorten this URL. So the next sharing method is the snapshot that creates the public link that can be accessed by anyone on the planet. And we can set the expiry. That means if we select one day, the link will be expired after one day. And please note that this is a snapshot. That means whatever the data is there till now, that data will only be shared. The changes to the metrics in the future will not be reflected in this snapshot dashboard. So let's publish the snapshot. So this is the link that is generated. Let's copy this and access on a different browser without login. As you can see, this is the snapshot that we shared. Still in this snapshot, we can change the date range and see the data. Example, last 30 minutes. As you can see, the annotations also present on this dashboard. But any changes that happen in the future will not be reflected in this snapshot. And next sharing method is export as the JSON. When we export it, it will download the JSON file. So save to file. As you can see, it downloaded the JSON file. If anyone wants to import the JSON file, all they need to do is go to dashboards, click on new and import. And this is where we can upload the dashboard. And let's give a different name to this dashboard as copy, change the UID to something else and import. As you can see, the new dashboard is created exactly the same way as pod stats. We can go to dashboards and we can see the two dashboards. And we can open this dashboard and we can make changes. Like example, we can remove a chart and save it. It's a deleted graph, save it. So these changes to this dashboard will not affect the changes to the original dashboard. So let's go back to the share screen. And final sharing method is the public dashboard. This also generates the dashboard URL but unlike snapshots, the changes that occur in the future will also be reflected in this. So let's acknowledge all these things and generate public URL. So now we can copy this and go back to different browser and access this link. As you can see, this is the public dashboard. Let's go to our Grafana UI. And if we pause sharing this dashboard, the link will not be accessible anymore. As you can see, the dashboard has been paused by the administrator. So let's go back. And also we can revoke the public URL. That means this link will not be accessible anymore. As you can see, the dashboard you are trying to access does not exist. And if you want to manage this snapshot and public dashboards, there is a separate menu called snapshots. Here we can delete those snapshots and also public dashboards. So these are the different ways with which we can share our dashboards. So let's close this screen. So now let's see what is this playlist is. Sometimes we want to set up monitoring screen that displays different dashboards one after another without manual intervention. Playlists allow us to create sequence of dashboards that will be displayed automatically switching from one to another at specific intervals. To create the playlist, all we need to do is click create playlist and give a name, pod metrics and interval to switch between the dashboards and we can select the dashboards here. So let's select this dashboard and also the copy save it as you can see our playlist is ready and now if you want to play this playlist click on the start playlist and we can change the mode as normal tv or kiosk so let's select the kiosk and start pod metrics as you can see the dashboards are switching for every two seconds automatically so this is how we can play our dashboards in the tv or kiosk and finally for common use cases like infrastructure monitoring we don't need to create these dashboards from the scratch Somebody has already created and uploaded online and we can use it as it is as it's the same for every company. There are pre-configured dashboards available on the grafana.com uploaded by the community and we can search for those dashboards. Example, I want the dashboards that work with Prometheus data source. So let's select the data source as Prometheus. So these are the dashboards that are powered by the Prometheus metric. So let's select this node exporter fill and to import this into our dashboard, all we need to do is copy ID to clipboard or as we did previously, we can download the JSON and import it. So let's copy the clipboard for now and go back to our Grafana UI and click on new dashboard and import and paste this ID here. So let's load it and we should select our data source that is Prometheus and import. As you can see, our dashboard with all the node metrics is ready. So this is how you can import the dashboard from the online. And these dashboards can be organized into folders. So we can create a new folder here and give the name as node metrics create and go back to dashboards and we can move this node exported dashboards to this new folder move so this is how when there are so many dashboards are there we can organize them into the folders i hope you got entire understanding of dashboards as a homework please create a simple dashboard for the four golden metrics and post it in our telegram channel 
You can find more about these four golden metrics in PromKill video of Prometheus series. In the next chapter, let us see how to add filters to these dashboards with hands-on. Stay tuned. My name is Pawan El Tepu and thank you very much for watching this video. If you like the content, please share it with your friends and do not forget to subscribe to my channel to not miss any updates.